Welcome to Elementary Hot Topic. So today we're talking about mortgages. And we've got a couple of good topics we're going to cover. And for those of you who joined me today, I hope you're going to love what we have to talk about. Now, I did invite some of you to um, send questions in advance if you were unable to make it. You know my guests. I've um, interviewed them before, and I can't wait to get started. There you are. Hi, Hi Doc. Hello. How are you? I'm well. That's I'm well. well. Happy good. Monday. Happy How Monday. You been? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's good. Good weekend. I know you were busy with a lot of showings that you had booked. A couple. Couple people are still seeing. They're taking longer to buy, but they're seeing, you know, which is, yeah. Uh, yeah so, which, which is great. Well, that's what we want to see. Yeah. Yes. The more so, they see, the the closer they get to their next home. So. Yeah. No, for sure. Which means, you know, there's some confidence and some sentiment, and people are coming out, and you know, um, which is great, right? So there's there's um, the one thing for sure is that quite a bit of choices you know they have um they have some choices and they have some um muscle yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to uh, negotiate a little bit sure. right sure. so let's get started sure. let's introduce yourself yeah. uh, to our guest uh well first of all thanks for having me i love i love elementary love the guests that you bring on uh i am manny najafi i'm a mortgage agent level two uh, currently with North Power Mortgages, Inc. in Toronto. Uh, but I do service all of Ontario, and we do have clients all across Canada, uh, depending um, where things need to be done. Yes. So my focus primarily has been Ontario mortgages. The hot topic these days is obviously the rates and the Bank of Canada rate announcement on Wednesday Yeah. Um, yeah. that everyone's been calling me about. Yeah, right now the market is 90% priced in to have another rate drop on Wednesday. Yeah. So we're potentially looking at another 0.25 drop yeah. on Wednesday. So yeah. that's the big news. Which is exciting, to... right? Because yeah. the way I look at it is, you know, a 0.25, no one's going to go out and be like, hey, let's just, you know, buy the biggest house on the block. But one thing it's going to really, you know, set the ball rolling is a confidence piece, yeah. right? People are going to feel like, hey, you know, um, maybe there's some downward direction for this mortgage, right? Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, I mean, what ha happened last time when there was a small drop, you saw a flurry of people that were just waiting on the sidelines, ready to go. Most of these people have their pre-approvals ready and done. And the 0.25 is not going to make or break their payments. Obviously, a 0.25, it's not a, a whole lot in terms of savings. It's definitely not going to make you make a decision that now is the right time to get in. However, what it does do is, is that it gives you confidence that the market is slowly rebounding. Mm -hmm. And if nothing goes crazy, we're still headed in the right direction, right? Yeah. We saw back uh, in, in uh, May, there was a little blip back up. In inflation numbers, but for the June numbers, we're down again. And right now, Bank of Canada is sort of, their hand is being forced into dropping the rate by another 0.25. Right now, the, the market is soft. Um, we do have a soft labor market, particularly. We have weak economics coming out, out of out of most, most sectors. Um, so, and companies are not uh, investing enough. They're not hiring enough. There's not enough projects being done so that the economy kind of keeps rolling. So typically the only hand Bank of Canada has, it's their monetary policy is by increasing or decreasing rates. Right now their hand is sort of being forced into reducing it, but we're still headed in the right direction, right? Yeah. So most economies are calling for another 0.25 drop. In fact, right now we have a 50-50 chance of another drop in September as well for the September 4th. Yeah. So we could be potentially by the end of the year, we could be in a really good, you know, uh, rate environment. And yeah. the confidence that's been that's been building in the economy, are you going to see? I think a flurry of people coming into the market, and that's going to cause probably even more multiple offers on the limited supply that we already have. I know. 
yeah, what do you see there in terms of supply? <laughs> the supply right now, I think there's a lot of um, sellers putting their houses on the market, right? I think what had happened is, you know, see, what you try and tell people is, let's talk about what what is really important to you, right? What do you want to see happen? Let's achieve those goals. And uh, a lot of times, you know, when people are of this mindset that we're just going to wait, we're going to test the market, we're going to we're going to time the market, that almost doesn't time out well, right? So I noticed a few people were saying, well, we're going to test time the market and we're going to wait until the rate drops and then we're going to put our house on the market the week the rate drops, right? Well, we saw a little bit of activity in in a lead up to that. Yeah. And um, so in a lead up to the rate dropping in May, there was a bit of activity, right? And, um, but then really after that, it, it, it's like, you know, crickets, right? The rate drops and yeah. no one's coming out. Like, I mean, I'm showing homes, uh, but people are not saying, oh, let's let's put in an offer. Like people are like taking their time. They're looking at homes. I'm showing a yeah. few extras. You know what I mean? And people want to negotiate. But that's what Absolutely. I'm also finding a little bit of a, a tricky. I want to uh, tell people like if you have a question, make sure you drop your question either in the comments we're watching or in the question icon. Either way, um, it'll be great if you can, yeah. if you have questions and you drop it. I can't even see any of the questions or whoever's on, but uh, obviously I think you're seeing it on your side, but I do agree with your comment about timing the market. I hear that a lot and I ask people, what does that mean, right? Because what are you timing it for? If you're timing it for the rates to drop, well, everyone else might be waiting for that, right? Um, if you, you have to look at it based on your own, your own goals that like you mentioned, like if it's really hard for you to carry the property and that's why you are looking to sell it, Obviously, you want to max out the price that you want to get, but you have to look at your own finances and say, hey, can I still carry this property another two, three months? Because if you're waiting for the next drop, what's to stop you from getting a little bit greedy and say, hey, why don't we wait again till September? Why don't we wait again till the next rate drop after that? How long is that cycle going to continue? So I think that what you can do, the best way you can time it is to see what your goals look like. What do they line up with? Um, what's your goal in the next six months? If you want to get rid of the property to open up some cash flow for your other bills, well, selling may not necessarily be the best way. You can have someone else look at your finances and say, hey, no, if you consolidate a few things, we might be able to keep this property, keep that asset that's generating some some value for you and look at it. Um, so when, when people say, I want to time the market, I'm like, what does that really mean? What's your end goal here? Right. And then based off of that, then we can extrapolate and say, Hey, uh, okay. What are the finances look like? What are the overall goals? And let's see how we can make them line up. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. And, and this is the thing too, right? I always say to people, have you had that conversation? Have you shared your goals? Because see, there's two parts to the story. I think a lot of times people on one hand you know, randomly pick someone to buy their largest asset. And I'll say that randomly. Some people will do a little more digging. They get the sentiment. They feel comfortable with you. They they get it that you're not out to rip them off. But some people are just randomly picking people who are not doing what is in their best interest, right? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, our ethics are strong. As a, as a realtor, um, it's in the best interest of the client. That's how we have to work. It's not about me. I'm going to, I'm going to eat whether, whether you buy from me today, you buy from me tomorrow. It makes yeah. no difference, right? Um, and and that's where I think a lot of people are just, um, you know, blindly just going um, and not really digging a little deeper and figuring out what are their goals? What are they looking to achieve? Is it the right time for them to sell their home, buy their home, buy another home? Yeah. Or should they wait a little bit? Like, what are they looking to get? Or should they refinance? Or should they do... X amount of whatever. So that's where I think, you know, um, people have to get, you, you have to trust the person you're working with, right? And yeah. if you trust them, then both of you are on the same page, you're going to head in, in a really, really good direction. Yeah. But the one yeah. thing I am noticing, a few things that I'm noticing um, is, um, you know, we haven't seen these homes come on the market for a long time that have, um the power of sale <laughs> attached to it, yeah. right? And um, yeah. yeah, and I feel like people are not 
in those cases, not really looking ahead and really falling behind. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example. You know, I showed this property and um, I showed this property multiple times. I showed it the first time and the homeowners were trying to sell it and they were really kind of way off the mark on pricing and they could have sold it and really kind of got out of it. But then their property got taken away and um, put on the market. Yeah. And, you know, now they have to get you market value. They can't just give it away for a song. No. But, you know, there's a little bit of a reality, right, um, on that piece. So, you know, and that's a good segue to say to people like, hey, if you're struggling, what do you need to do if you're struggling? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and, I mean, one of the first one of the first things I do is um, when it comes to finances, aside from the licensing and everything, I have, a, I have a responsibility to the clients to to pick what's best for them first over my own my own personal gains, right? So, for example, um, I could I could do a mortgage, get paid on it, but it's not necessarily the best uh, thing for the client. Down the line, they're going to be cursing me, even though I could be long gone. But I'm not looking I'm not looking for that. I'm I'm more interested in the long term gain. So, uh, and the long term relationships because I have clients that come back to me year over year. So, number one. Um, if you're unscrupulous and you're not doing the right thing for the client, oftentimes they may get screwed down the line, and that that just means that's there's no return business. Number two, that gives my industry as a whole uh, a bad name, right? Uh, there's bad actors in every industry. Yeah. We know, yeah. that, right? Whether you could be a doctor that does un unspeakable things to yeah. clients, we've seen that a million times, right? So uh, I look at myself as face of the industry. I look at myself as, as the face of our company, who I represent, my colleagues, and everyone else around me. So I want to make sure that I do the best job that I can for them and represent myself. And thirdly, I love when clients come back to me or they give me a referral. That to me is a stamp of approval that, yes, you've done my job. And oftentimes I've turned down business because I say, hey, it's not in your best interest. You're, you're happy to do whatever you want with your life, but my reasons are A, B, and C. I give them a reason to trust me for that re for a specific goal that we have in mind right oftentimes you know people can say yes or no or there's a lot of people saying yes 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 i want to get it done i'm in sales i got to get clients and i got to do it but you have to look at it and do the right thing for the client and one of the things that i do is i look at their finances as 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 a whole right buying a home is is one thing right but if you have car payments if you have children payments if you have other obligations other properties, in fact, or other properties that are coming that are not necessarily um, in your balance sheet right now. So, because there's a lot of people that have purchased pre-construction before, it was a different mm -hmm. environment mm -hmm. in 2019 or, or 2020, and they they're coming up for closing right now, and they have a renewal coming up, right? So, I think about that ahead of time. I mean, if you have a renewal come, how are you going to qualify for the other property that's closing in four months after that? Be honest with me. Give me the full picture. Let me figure it out. And then I can lay out our plan and say, hey, if you go with, you know, option A or B, sometimes there's only one option. We have no choice, yeah. but we'll lay out the groundwork about why. And then look at the long term. Is if we are stuck with only one plan, okay, so what do we do in two years' time or three years' time to turn things around so you're not in the same situation again? Right? Yeah. No. So. It's just it's just a matter of talking to the to the client, asking the right questions, and getting to know the real big picture of what what's happening. No, for sure, for sure. Um, with regard to uh, CMHC, what are you seeing? Uh, what are you noticing? What are you seeing with CMHC? Uh, so CMHC. Uh, so obviously they, they they took away some of those. Um, they took away the, the the first home buyer incentive yeah. program, yeah. where uh, they were essentially coming in as a part owner so they took that away they realized that you know the program that was brought in it's not it's not um it wasn't producing enough for it to be worthwhile what i am seeing is less and less people are uh going in and doing a high ratio mortgage right so a lot of times people would do a high ratio mortgage where they put down less than 20 percent to get into a home um for the homes that they're looking to to get into the lowest amount that you can put is 5%. And that's for a $500,000 condo, right? There's not that many of those that are around where in the area that people want to live at. Unless you're, um, so they, they you're in Barrie. Like, unless yeah, you're so, looking in Barrie or I mean, somewhere like, further out. Yeah. Elsewhere. So yeah. from my experience, CMSC is basically saying that the, the numbers are, are getting less and less, right? So we've seen there's less and less condos being bought Right, we're in fact at 27-year 27, 27 lows from what I'm reading. So same 
currency is often being used for anything less than a million. And from my experience, I'm seeing more and more people buying and borrowing down payment or getting a family gift upwards of 150 to 200,000 to get into a property that's actually worth that money so they can build and, and grow a family. Anything less than that, we're seeing the numbers actually going a little bit lower and lower. Yeah. Well, yeah. you see, the, the thing with the condos is this is what I'm noticing. A lot of the condos were not, you know, uh, built to suit growing families. No. They are really, the newer ones, they're like shoe boxes in yeah. the sky is what they're being called. Yeah, right? they're quite users, um, essentially. Yeah, and like, so, like a single couple, maybe a baby at best if there's a small den, but the areas that you're talking yeah. that they're being built are not really family friendly. Right. And and really, they're catering to investors, even though the investors are, you know, will will try and rent it out. But you know, when you have something that's like three hundred square feet, and you're you're not a, a a single person, or maybe even a couple, it might be a little tough. I mean, you know, as women in our shoes, mm -hmm. but um, you know, jokes aside, like I mean, those small little condos are very like extremely small, and so yeah. a lot of people are not wanting to get into. Uh, buying it and that's what's happening like a lot of the investors are looking for the cheapest smallest and when I say cheapest they're not really cheap prices because some of these new units came I'm in at a very high no. price per square foot you yeah. know they're yeah. looking for good return on investment and when you're buying a tiny home that you can't I mean you can't like the, the rent that you're going to get from it is not going to even come close to the mortgage payment you're paying for right now so a lot of times, some of the investors are saying, hey, you know what, if I spend a little bit more and get a townhome that I can get twice as much rent. So some of my investors, uh, clients that I'm, I'm, they're looking, they're primarily focusing on free whole townhomes or even semis because they're like, you know what, at least I can rent that out for like 4K, 5K, maybe come close to making my, um, making my mortgage payment. So I'm not out of pocket too much. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there is actually a limit uh, on how small a unit can be for it to be mortgaged properly through one of the banks. Right. So some of these micro units that they're being built or suggested, some lenders won't touch them. So you might be stuck with uh, another alternative lender that might the rates are a little bit higher, which makes it even less likely where an investor can make money. Are there good deals to be had? Of course. Absolutely. There's tons of good deals. But right now, the condo market is going through a bit of a shift where there's there's a lot of supply. A lot of people who are investors they have already sold their, their secondary units. There's a a ton of pre-constructions that were delayed that are hitting the market. So it's almost like a perfect storm where all these things are combining where the, 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 the condo market is sinking. And some of those people, like I said, my clients are saying, looking and saying, hey, if I just up my budget by 100K and put a little bit more down, I can get a townhome rather than the small condo. Yeah, right. for sure. Right? And, just, and plus yeah. with, you know, with the fees and stuff, right? When you take into yeah. consideration what some of the fees are, it's, it's like, you know, each... Uh, Hundred bucks is like fifteen thousand dollars in a mortgage, yeah, kind of yeah. like you know what I it's mean. Like, I'm not. Don't take my numbers. Like, I'm not the mortgage like broker. Extra car payment, yeah, honestly, like some yeah. of these, I think upwards of seven, eight hundred dollars if the yeah. building's a little bit older. Um, that's you know eight hundred bucks an extra a month. Like I know there's amenities, there's things to get from it, right? But on the face of it, you're still paying eight hundred bucks. Uh, Just qualifies you for less, right? Yeah, yeah right. That's and that thing. those numbers actually go into your mortgage calculation. So right. a lot of, so when I was running, so I have this perfect example where just a, I think it was, I was running numbers based on a $500 a mortgage, uh, $500 per month. The difference in a mortgage where you qualify for, one of them was about 550, the other one was about 650. So that alone can just yeah. tell you like, yeah, every 500, I think reduces, uh, every 400 reduces your purchase by, by about $100,000. Okay. Give or take those Significant. numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Significant. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's yeah, a downtown you, condo versus a uptown yeah. townhome. Yeah. And you know what I tell people? Well, if you're planning to, let's say, own it for 25 years, the life of your mortgage, right? 25 years later, you'll continue to pay that whatever that amount is, and and it increases, right? That's not to say you don't you shouldn't buy a condo. All I'm saying because. Really, you may be starting out, but I think the market's shifting in a sense that yeah. very soon people are going to start out in the step by step uh, like they used to before. I think right now we're in this in this living up with the Joneses era where everyone is like 
hey, my friend's got this house. Like, I have yeah. the same um, thing. You know, a client will come to me and they'll they'll be like, yeah, I'm looking for this. And it's like a small little condo or something to that effect. Yeah. And, you know, before long, they're like, oh, Jacqueline, can you show us something? And I'm like, really, do you need that right now? But like, you know, I'm not telling you what to buy. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like kind of like, take a step back. Let's, you know, um, do it, go a little slow. And sometimes they'll be like, no, no, but my friends got this, yeah, you know, like, yeah. so it's almost like they have kind to fit in or back, something. Kind of goes back to your discovery question. Like, why are you doing this? Are you doing this to, to invest? Yeah. Are you doing this to build a family? What are you doing? Like, if you're doing to invest, then yeah, there's tons of good properties out there, the foreclosures that you mentioned, sometimes you yeah. get a good deal and it makes it worthwhile. If it's an end home, then I'd be like, listen, are you, this is going to be your starter home, right? There's no, there's no dream home anymore where, you get the house, you get married, you get the big house, five rooms, white picket fence, and the whole nine yards, right? That doesn't that that doesn't really work in our environment anymore. In Toronto, you're buying a small condo as a couple, you're refinancing it or selling it, getting a nicer, larger down payment, maybe some gift from a family. Then you buy a home to start your family, your first kid, second kid. So you you kind of have to do it in steps right now. Uh, but I think it kind of goes back into your original um, conversation about have those conversations with the client, get yeah. to know your client. You know, do, do your KYC and then figure out wh what it is that you're trying to achieve and not just buy a home just because we have to buy a home because our cousins bought it or our neighbor bought it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but everybody, I, I am a strong believer that everybody should own a home. Um, yeah, no, you should absolutely. have a, something that you call home, whether it's a condo, somewhere where you, you as soon as you, you know, you close the door behind you, it's, it's you. yours and it's, it's your, it's your, it's your castle, whether it's a small town yeah. condo yeah. or a big mansion. I think you should own. It's a good investment. To have, um, you know, but you got to do it the right way so that you are actually looking and you are building value in it, right? right? Yeah, I just did a video on that saying, like, I'm not a gambler. When it comes to my home, it's off limits. Like, I am not a gambler with my home. My home, I mean, it's it's not perfect. It doesn't have everything I want, but it doesn't matter. It's my home. Right. And the way I look at it is, you know, no one's going to tell me, hey, by the way, I want to, you know, um, I want to um, sell my house, so you need to move out. Or I want to sell my condo, you need to find another place to live. You know, people think, hey, I got lucky. I'm only making $1,500 rents, right? But what happens when you're planning, your budget is $1,500, and now your landlord says, I'm really sorry, but I want to use the, the condo for my own use, or my my my, um, my parents are moving back, or my daughter is moving back because they can use it for those categories right yeah. and then what happens so they can't the kid is coming back because now they are grown up and they're moving back in and your fifteen hundred dollar rent is not going to cut it anymore so you're gonna have to go out in this real world and find rent for twenty four twenty yeah. five hundred for a one bedroom um and that's a thousand dollars more than you budgeted so but at the same time, you could be paying the twenty five hundred, but you've had a plan of how you're going to pay off that house, whereas you've been renting for the last little while. Now, in some cases, I think people have no choice; they have to rent. But I do think you need to be putting a plan of action. Like I think um, immigrants are by far the most um, the the my clients that are immigrants. Absolutely, like it's like. They've got like a one to three year plan. They come in yeah. and they're like, yeah. hey, we're coming in, Jacqueline, we want to buy a house. Like, how how can you make it work? I mean, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, I mean, you're actually working with yeah. one group of um, that uh, I sent I to. I am, but, yeah. 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 First time home so. buyer. So as a, as a, as a, as a child, I, I, I immigrated to Canada when I was 10. For the first, I think, 10 years of our life, we were always renting. Uh, as far as I was living at home, we were always renting. So I, I, I see... Um, I see the troubles that a lot of people have, not just the people that are here, but people coming in trying to build a life. Um, home ownership is something that seems very impossible in a lot of other countries, right? In other countries like where I'm from, we don't have a mortgage, right? It, you have to pay cash to buy the home. So home ownership, that's why a lot of people that come, the first thing you want to do is settle in, buy a home. Nothing makes you work harder than having to make those mortgage payments, I'll tell you that much, right? So. Um, so I've been there. I, I know I, I, I was a first time home buyer myself and I didn't have a lot of help when I was doing mine. And, um, you know, I got screwed in some, some areas. So I understand all the troubles. Yeah. yeah I'll say, it. um, 
it wasn't the, it wasn't the best experience, particularly because I, I had no one to hold my hand and say, hey, it's going to be OK. Yeah. You know, we, you're going through a tough time right now with this and, and these things didn't work out. So I always try to try to be that person because I was there. I was in their shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone has different experiences. But at some point, you know, uh, you you do hit a spot where you're like, I need someone to explain things to me, hold my hand and walk me through that process. So I take extra care and I, I take as long as it takes with my first time home buyers. Usually I a lot like I do like 15 minute phone calls. When it's a first time home buyer, I leave it open because I'm like, this conversation could be 20 minutes or like the last one I had was yeah. like 45 minutes. Yeah. Right. Um, and I can, I can talk and, and, and you know, <laughs> sometimes I over explain something just because I want them to have that information. Right. Um, I want them to say, hey, there's reasons why we're going with plan A and not B. Um, and that builds trust. Honestly, like sometimes clients don't always like they they sometimes come in with their questions, but they already know some of the information and they're really eager to tell me. And I'm like, that's fantastic. You know, tell me what you know and let me fill in the gap so that you're confident about mm-hmm. your purchase. Yeah. How is your biggest purchase for most people? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unless you're buying like hundreds of cars and a plane, right? A home is probably going to be one of your biggest purchases. So if I could take that extra step, walk you through it, make sure you're comfortable and you know exactly what's going on and make that process, particularly when it comes to closing your mortgage and, and like getting the keys in hand, if I can make that as smooth as possible for you, I'll, I'll, I'll go that extra way. Um, again, you know, doing good service is something that you can't put a number on. It can't be something that can be bought, essentially. Like you can pay for whatever and not get good service. So I, I don't ever, ever think about it like that. I think about it, if this was me or if this was a family member of mine going through this process, what do they want to see? And that's how I, that's how I operate my business. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I say this. As a realtor, we, we actually have an ethics course that we have to take. And, you know, I chuckle when I, when, I, when I have that because I think to myself, you either have ethics or you don't. Um, I don't think you can be taught et- ethics. I think yeah. you either have it or you don't. And um, it blows my mind, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, I, think it, I think in our industry, particularly like yours and mine, uh, when it comes to finance, sometimes we're hit with challenges where you can sort of go the unethical route you might be given a, a fork and if you're ever if your thought is ever maybe or maybe not then uh, i don't think you're an ethical person in general right you should never question your ethics and what's right for the client um yeah so we do get faced with that sort of challenges in our industry a lot as, as i'm sure you see but i always take it upon myself to to make sure we're, we're, we're headed in the right direction because who knows who knows what that other direction where that might lead you down the line I say, hey, I don't do jail. That's one thing I don't do is jail time. <laughs> uh, well, jail time. No, forget that. I just I want to be able to put my head on the pillow and not worry about am I gonna, you know, are my clients okay, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyways, um, let me ask you. Moving on, yeah. I know we've been talking for a while. So moving on, let me ask you to give us some maybe some insights and tips on um, if someone has a renewal mortgage. Okay. So renewal, renewal, renewal. That's a big topic right now. Of course, a lot of people, when they're buying right now, they know what the numbers are. The thing with the renewal is, I'm sure you've heard of the term saying payment shock, mm-hmm. right? Uh, that, that word's being thrown around. That's because they were uh, basically, there's a lot of people that, that were having fixed mortgages, whether it was a three year or five year, they're coming up through this year and next year, right? Uh, there were a lot of variable clients who were, who were in the same boat. Some variable payments were going up. So those people, they kind of fluctuate. There's, there's two types of variable payments mm-hmm. uh, for layman terms. Is there's ones where the payments stay the same, but the portion of how much you the portion of how much you're putting into your principal versus interest changes as the years go by. Uh, where interest when interest rates got increased, what they did was you're paying very little bit into, into your principal if your payments stayed the same, but they were just increasing the amortization of the back end. And we saw cases where amortizations were like 50, 60 years, and the clients were not even aware of it. When you're coming up to do a renewal, all of that would get reset to some degree, and you're looking at rates that are happening today, which could be three, four, five percent higher than what you have right now. So you may not even know the true cost of, of, of the current ownership right now until you until you renew. So if you do have a renewal coming up, first thing I tell you is your bank's 
are supposed to be calling you or sending you letters about six months to three months in advance. And their first prerogative is to get you to re-sign with them as quickly as possible. Want to make it easier to know they can count on their guaranteed business. And oftentimes, it's whatever rate they have available. There's ways where you can, you can push back on that. Um, or wait, we are in a descending market where rates are going down. If your renewal is in October, November, reach out to a mortgage broker and have a look at what's the current market rates that are happening right now and compare that to whatever your bank is offering you. You have a little bit of time and wait and, and, and kind of, you know, kind of see what's coming down the line, right? Um, and don't let them scare you and say, hey, this is a limited time offer. It's going to expire, sign right away. It's one of their tactics to get you to sign. When you have a renewal coming up, there's tons of things you can do. It's a good time to look at your overall finances to see, hey, is there any debt that I'm paying for that's high interest or higher than my mortgage interest that I want to consolidate and, and, and make my payments pay that off faster, right? Is there other, other things that I want to purchase? Is there a refinance? Is there any equity I want to take from my property to fix up my basement, to, to, to repave my driveway? Other things that are not bills, but you want to have spent money to spend on. So when you have a renewal coming up, it's a good time to look at your overall mortgage. What are the rates you're paying? Can we actually reduce some of that payment right now? Can we reduce some of your payments into your other debts and consolidate that into your mortgage? There's a lot of things that you can do at the time of renewal. Um, so I would highly recommend getting in touch with a mortgage broker just because we have a good understanding of what most of the banks are offering out there uh, that work with brokers. It's over like 50, 60 different mm -hmm. lenders out there, the top four or five banks, they do work with mortgage brokers. So have a look at what might be coming down the line. And I'll be honest with you, two out of the five that I've seen uh, this week or last week alone, two of the rates were good. Three of them were not the most competitive. And I told the one of them, you know, nothing like I, I don't have to do anything for you. You're not making any changes, but go back to your bank and say you want this rate because that's the competitive rate in the market. They were super happy and they called me back. They got the rate. Again, I was just doing the right thing for the client uh, by telling them to go and get the rate. Right. Um, I, I get to feel good about myself because I did something good for a client. But at the end of the day, it's the right thing for the client, right? That builds more trust with them. So next time they have something, they'll come back to me. Um, yeah, but renewals right now are, are really big, right? Um, it's not something that you should be afraid of. The sooner you start to investigate six months out, four months out, the better off you are because then you can understand what's happening with the rates, with the markets. Are there other banks or other lenders that can offer me something better? Or is there any changes that I'd like to make? And then, you know, as you're going, as your as your renewal is approaching, then you can make a more informed decision and not just make a spur of the moment and, and just do it right away. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good advice. Um, so in today's market for like something that is five hundred thousand or even seven fifty. Yeah. Like what would they be looking at for a dollar amount? Dollar amount. Okay. So if you were looking at it right now, your clothing is tomorrow. Well, but you get what I mean. Uh, your clothing is happening <laughs> yeah, this yeah. week, right? Um, the best rates right now, give or take, and I'm taking an average because some are higher, mm -hmm, some are lower. Mm -hmm. It's around 5%, 499, right? 500,000, um, you're looking at, if your mortgage is $500,000, you're looking at about a, a $2,600, $2,700 payment right now. And for uh, for a million dollars, about 53, 54, 400. So five to seven, to a million bucks, you're looking at about twenty four, forty five hundred. So it's uh, it's pretty, it you know, it's sliding down, right? So if you are unsure about where and how much you can afford, we can simply just do a quick pre approval for you based on some of the figures that we have. At least figure out what the payments are, right? And I always say, hey, how much do you pay in rent, right? It, and that's technically someone else's mortgage. How much are you paying for rent and this is your, your mortgage payment, right? Is this something that you can make an adjustment for, right? I always look at it at both ways, um, which helps clients kind of understand, okay, I'm paying this, I'm paying like 2,500 for rent, but if I buy my own condo, I'll be paying 2,600 in mortgages, small, you know, uh, property taxes or condo fees, but it's still something mine and I'm building that, that, that yeah. the value in the asset. If I ever need to take equity out or sell it, it's almost like a savings vehicle for me. 
Yeah, right? No, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. but those numbers are, are you know, you know, and give it's or yours, take. Right? That's and that's um, yeah, that's those are based on the current three-year average rates, so right? Three-year mm -hmm. fixed and uh, thirty years amortization. So, um, we'll, those are the numbers, right? So, if you, you know, if you like to have the exact payments sort of understood for the next three years, I would do a three-year fix. If you're a little bit more open and you kind of want to see where the market's going and you want to kind of, you like, you know what, I want to kind of write it down. Um, variables also becoming a little bit more appealing, um, obviously given that if Bank of Canada reduces the rates, it becomes a little bit more appealing. If you can get a good discount uh, off of your variable, it might be something to consider. Yeah, yeah sure. So first time home buyers. Yes. Let's talk about them because it's a, it's a, uh, you know, at the tail end of the day, while my niche is um, uh, downsizers and seniors, and I do a lot of that, I also do a lot of first time home yeah. buyer work. And, yeah. you know, um, I mean, the service level that I offer is, un, you know, uncanny because I know once they buy with me, they will come back. It's that repeat business, yeah. right? And yeah. that's what you're earning. Yeah. Same. You know, the first the buy is the first buy. Yeah. But, but you know, they also, they, they mean a lot to me because while I love helping seniors and it's, it's, it's so amazing that I get to, you know, uh, walk them through probably their last purchase or someone who's downsizing and I can help them with, you know, a lot of, um, well, the empty nesters or the whole nine yards. The first time home buyer is, is as I have a soft spot for them, right? I mean, we were all there. I came, I was an immigrant, I came here. Um, and, and so I feel like it's, it's just, it, it's a different level of excitement. I'm like so over yeah. the moon when, when they buy and they're able to get through. Yeah. And, you know, it's unfortunate because over time, it's getting harder for um, professional women to really be able to own their own space. Like I, for a while, then I like you know I used to deal with a lot of professional, single professional women, who we could get into the market even with um, less than a hundred thousand. You know what I mean? But nowadays it's so much harder. Um, but that doesn't stop us. You know that doesn't stop us from finding you know ways to work on. But tell us a little bit about insights and what tips you can give yeah. them. Um, so first of home buyers i have a soft spot for them as well um first experience really does build like like me it it always stuck with me my my experience and uh how how differently i wish it had gone right i always i always have a soft spot for them and uh you sort of i find that i i take on the troubles a little bit more um so when 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 they're, you know, they have their heart set on a house and if they, their bid doesn't go well or they don't qualify, I, it sort of bothers me a little bit more, um, particularly because a lot of my first time home buyer uh, clients right now are children of my other clients, right? Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. there's a little bit more weight when it's like a referral and it's a first time home buyer. So I always spend a little bit more time with them. As I said, I explain things to them a little bit further, the whole process, like, okay, what does it mean from the minute you and I talk all the way to when, when you get your keys handed to you, What's kind of the process? Um, and then, you know, when are you guys building? So I, I find a lot of times first time home buyers are coming to me uh, and sometimes it's a little bit further in the conversation and they should have come to me a little bit earlier. So some people are like, I want to buy a house, right? What's the first step? Let's look at our finances, right? Without the finances, without the money part, without the mortgage, you're not realistically going to own a home. So let's look at that and don't do it. If you want to buy a home and you want to move in there in August, don't come to me in July, right? Come maybe six months in advance. Maybe you have your credit bureau or your credit history that has to be, you know, tuned up. Sometimes it can just take a couple of months. Sometimes it takes longer. I've had a case where there was something that they, they weren't aware of in their credit bureau. And in our discovery, um, it came to light. And because of that, their plan had to be shifted. It wasn't a complete wreck, but it, we went from having it for four months down to six eight to 12 months down the line, it could still happen. So a lot of times start ahead, um, start to accumulate your down payment and have a good idea about where it's coming from altogether, right? Whether if it's your own savings, if it's coming in from investments, if it's coming from outside the country, depending on like which country, where, who and how, um, 
you should really be aware of some of the regulations that exist in Canada when it comes to just transferring money altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, as somebody who spent so many years in AML and banking, right, we have a good idea about it. Um, some countries are, are prohibited. Some countries are there, but they're just different methods. If you're getting a gift from a family member in Canada, how does it work? Do all lenders accept it? Is there limitations? So there's, there's so many little things um, that those questions, if you just, you know, if you spend ahead of time covering, then they're going to alleviate some of your, your, your headache down the line. And sometimes it can cost you a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. um, and just, and always, always, always do your pre-approval. Okay, doing your pre-approval can make a difference with, do I put down 5% or do I have to put down 20%, yeah. right? And some of that, um, it has its own regulation. Some of it is based on your application specifically, right? And not every two people are like, not every two people are gonna get the, sometimes the same rates, not every two applications are the same. So the sooner you start, the sooner you can, can actually have a plan that's in place. And oftentimes I find like when I work with a first time home buyer, we can shave their their time down by maybe almost a few months. So if you're planning for next year, maybe I can help you shave that down into six months so you can move into a home sooner, right? Yeah. Um, um, but give yourself every opportunity to succeed, and you can't do that by doing last-minute things. Yeah, and I, I say to people, you know, it's great when you, you have a plan in place. So even if you are planning for next year, but you have a plan in place, it makes a big difference. Even like understanding that you know you may be using your rsps because you know that amount has increased drastically for both people yep. but it has to be in that rsp account for x amount of days before it can come out yeah. right and knowing that yeah. because sometimes people don't really realize that piece until um you trip on it right like or like because they, they they think they don't think to ask or they don't think to tell you or whatever like i think it's important yeah. for them you know, for people to know those things, at least by, um, and the more transparent you are, I think that's, yeah, that's where I, you'll get. I, I think the down payment piece is really key. That's, uh, I'll tell you, that's one yeah. area that bottlenecks for me. Um, it's a huge, uh, it can be a huge source of headache is because people are like, oh, I have the money. But I'm like, okay, where is it? How is it? It's, oh, I have an RSP. Well, RSPs, there's, there's specific forms you got to sign. There's timing. Um, are you aware that you could do like TFSA, FHSA? A lot of people are not yeah. even aware they could take yeah. money from FHSA. What that, that new yeah. uh, the new yeah. account for yeah. how it works. Um, a lot of people are not aware that if you borrow money um, for your down payment, right? Those numbers have to go into calculations. So if you have a line of credit it's coming from that, yeah. well, guess what? That has to go back into your calculation ahead of time. Um, so it can change a lot of things. So just knowing. Um, knowing a, a, a solid plan ahead of time can help you so much. I can't tell you how many how many hours or how much money clients have saved by just having a plan ahead where they're not scrambling last minute. Yeah, I know for sure. So we're going to wrap up because it's uh, we've been talking for a while. I didn't realize yeah. that time yeah. just goes uh, by when you, I guess when you're having I'm, fun. I'm holding back back too there's yeah. so much more i could share but. so we're gonna have to do uh, another show then oh, let's I've, do one after oh, no. you know um <laughs> yeah yeah for sure but um you know the one just in wrapping up you know yeah. i don't see any questions so i invite people to drop questions either um at jay watson homes or at mortgage.manny uh you can go directly to mortgage.manny and ask your questions if you have some and you don't feel like you want to ask it at, in this forum, yeah. um, we will do another follow-up show Absolutely. for all of you watching. Yeah. So pay attention and, and, you know, join us because we appreciate it. But, but as we wrap up, you know, maybe, you know, what's one thing that you want to tell people and, and then we'll get into your contact uh, and how they can reach you. Uh, yeah. Well, honestly, definitely give me a call um, or ask me questions. I don't necessarily have to work for you. I'm happy to answer questions, but engage with me. If, if it's I, I said something here that you disagree with, challenge me on it. Call me, message me, talk to me. I love having conversations with people. Um, and for me, it's the more people, if the more people that are talking, the more I think our industry is going to move forward. So I'm happy to converse. Um, if it's not about mortgages, I'm a huge soccer fan. Anybody's out there, but... Out there, there's, there's other hobbies that I have, but 
definitely, if you can't tell, I'd love to talk. So give me a shout and we'll talk about whatever specific issues that you have or questions that you have. Perfect. How can they reach you? So uh, uh, best way to reach me is by uh, sending me a text message or WhatsApp at 416-399-1993 or DMing me, all my contact information is on um, it's on IG if you go on my webpage. You guys can email me at manny at northpowermortgages.ca, uh, but the best way is to give me a call so we can talk, and I find a lot of times just a conversation just um, gets rid of any miscommunication. You know, when you're emailing back and forth or texting back and forth, some, it's sometimes too much to be said. So give me a shout, no obligation. Even if you want to use me as a secondary option just to review what you currently already have, more than happy to provide services or give you my honest opinion. Perfect. So I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I, I really do appreciate your time. I appreciate the help you give to my clients because um, it's important. Uh, you do take a lot of time with them. So thank you for that. And for all of you watching, my name is Jacqueline Watson. I'm a realtor with Sutton Group Tower in Toronto. So if you have uh, real estate questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Elizabetha. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, great conversations. Thank you so much. And Absolutely. I appreciate you joining. Like, I appreciate all of the viewers, you know, the time you take during your dinner hour to join us for this. It's really, it's, it's um, amazing. So thank you so much for joining and participating. If you have a, a question or a topic you'd like me to unpack further, please uh, feel free at any point to drop me a message. And um, if you're not following me, you know, let's follow each other. Let's uh, make new connections. You know, I truly believe that while Instagram is a space, what we have is a community, right? The more people that join us, the more we can help each other grow, but also kind of be a good connection for each other, Absolutely. right? Like, if, yeah. So, I mean, I have so many businesses that I've connected with over time. If you go to my uh, YouTube channel, you'll see that I have those videos there. And I do business with them because they're good people. And, you know, why not, right? Let, let's grow each other. So thank you again so much uh, for your time, uh, Manny. I really appreciate it. And for all of you watching, until next time, Thanks. we'll talk soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Jacqueline. Bye. 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 Real was... Somebody just joined. I'm so sorry. We are leaving. <laughs> <laughs>